right, it's day number two and already have done quite a bit of work. I have removed the second window frame and cleaned up the wall a bit, but still there is a lot of work to be done and we're going to start shortly in cleaning up the walls and repointing them. But before we do that, I will have to install a new scaffold. I have sanded and painted the second window frame and both frames are now inside the old house and now it's a matter of getting upstairs with the window frames uh, for that I still have to build the pulley system but that's coming probably tomorrow uh, but right now I need to install a scaffold. I have to rework the walls before the windows go in. I have to grind out all the old joints and then fill them up or point them up again with a mixture of chalk and sand and a bit of cement so that everything looks good again because that's my only chance I have to get to it. Now, I don't want to stand really on the tablet there. You might have seen this big natural stone. It's pretty wide, it's about this wide. And the walls are real wide as well. It's about one meter wide of the walls, but I don't want to stand there because it's very risky. The opening of the window frame is two meters 60. So I don't want to take any chances. So I got a scaffold for that. So this is a diamond disc and it's fairly thick as you can see and that's the kind of disc I'm going to use on the angle grinder to grind out all the joints. I have installed the scaffold, it's sitting actually on the tablet of the window and the rest is at the inside and I locked it in place so now I can work on the multiple levels to grind out the uh, joints in between the bricks. Now this is going to be a real dirty job so I have my dust mask on and a protective screen so at least I don't get nothing in my face or I don't inhale all the dust because you guys keep telling me to wear this kind of stuff and believe me I do but sometimes when I'm making a video I don't so I've got this real thick diamond disc on here sufficient to cut out all these grooves so that's what I'm going to do now it's going to be very dusty guys so I'm just going to film real short and then protect the camera So that's what I need to do now for a couple of hours. So uh, I'm going to stop the camera and I'll show you when I'm done. So as you see, I've been grinding out all the old joints. But now uh, I have some areas where I'm missing some bricks or half a brick. So what I need to do now is to go back downstairs, cut a few half bricks or even a quarter brick so I can actually put them in there. So I'm going to make now my mortar. Uh, the mortar will be based on white sand, with lime and some cement and then we'll make this all wet and then we're going to start pointing that up and at the same time uh, filling in uh, these individual uh, pieces of brick and once that is done I think it will be time to go for dinner again and that probably is going to be the end of day number one because this is still a little bit of work to be done. Pointing out these joints is easy but pointing out these joints here that's less fun because it's all the way up there and you know it falls down and all kind of stuff but you'll see it right so let me go and prepare the bricks and the mortar and we're gonna get going again 
So I finished pointing this wall and that's quite a bit different than what it was. And I've done it all around on the top and then back down on the other side. Um, you may see that the joints are, are not exactly aligned like what you would have on a new house, but that's not what I want because I want to have it blend in with the rest of the wall. And in some places, I actually had to install half a brick or a slice of a brick. And that's what I call a slice of a brick. So I took an original brick and then I grind it off a piece, as you can see. And then uh, I use a little mortar in the back, make it soaking wet, and then I pushed it in there like so. And that's the way I'm repairing the deepest holes on this wall. Now, I don't care about other small uneven areas because this is a very old building. If you have a look on the wall right here, you can see the state it's in and it looks awful and you would think you can't get it fixed, you can't get it uh, restored, but I can. You'll see, I might have to cut out some bricks and then put half bricks in, as I've shown you before, but I don't want to make it too smooth either because this is an old building and if I make it too smooth with new bricks, it's going to be too obvious and I don't want to have that. So now I'm going to continue grinding out the joints and then you'll see when I'm pointing it and then you will see the final result. So let me carry on with this. I removed the bad part of the brick and now I'm going to put just a slice of another brick on top of that. And these are the pieces and now I've made them wet before so that's very important. They must be very wet otherwise they won't fit. And I've placed an additive in my cement or my mortar. It's called Compactuna. And it it's kind of plastifies things a bit, but it makes it really fit well and stick well. And now I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes so the mortar is drying up a bit and it's getting sucked into the stone. And then we continue building on it. As you can see, it's pretty thin, so don't make it very dry because then this is not going to work. And this is how we're going to build this up, little bit by little bit. So that's how I do it, uh, putting in pieces of brick, little bit by little bit, it's the same kind of brick and I'm using a suitable mortar for that and that's how I built my way through this side wall here. I have a little bit more to do, about one more meter and then I'm done. Since I always work on my own, uh, sometimes weights are a bit too heavy and this window frame is real heavy and I said before that I would actually 
pull it up with a pulley system through the ceiling. So what I've done is I cut a hole in the temporary ceiling and this is just plywood for now. So that was by no means the final floor anyway. So that doesn't really matter. And then I could place the window frame all the way downstairs and now with a pulley system I can pull it up to where it's supposed to be. And then we need to get it to the next floor. So let me pull it up a bit more so I can actually lift it into place. We've got it in place. I now have the window on the first floor and now we need to lift it into the tower room which is another two meters or so, but that is going to be a different way. I'm going to slide it up some beams and we're just going to pull that up and try not to damage it. But so far things went pretty well. And after a lot of juggling and lifting and maneuvering, I got the two window frames finally in the tower room. And I didn't expect it to be that hard, but it was pretty tough to lift them up. And I haven't shown you on how I lifted the window frames from the first floor to the second floor, but it was the same method as from the ground floor to the first floor. So now it's time to start painting the window frames on the outside with the final paint. And I'm going to paint it with two coats of satin paint. Um, this is water-based paint, by the way. And I'm going to use a roller for that to apply it. And then I can install the window frames when it's, once it's dried up. Uh, I'm doing it right now with the final color because otherwise it's going to be way too hard to get to it once the window frames are in the wall because it's way too high up and I can't get to the outside unless I would have a very high ladder or a lift. 